this is. Super Mario Shadow. It's my reaction to what's so great about My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia by Mother Fisher. I was like on Sunday, I was just, what's, why is, why is My Hero Academia so damn good? Which can be something with My Hero Academia as well. It's like extraordinary decades, how to get there. It was a show that you know what to fall in love with. It's very like, like, what's so great about Hero Academia? I'm pretty sure he, like, his name is not the most famous, I'm just like, whatever. Over, so we were just doing this kind of job. Always does. I work. Like I, I, when I was in the middle, I'll pick up all the all, all the all, all the negative I've ever done. Just like a few hours. And this is on three, two, one, five. For several decades now, Shonen Jump has been one of the biggest names in anime and manga. And right now, one of the biggest names in Shonen Jump is My Hero Academia. Kohei Horikoshi's breakout series has taken the world, particularly the North American anime market, by storm. Since its anime adaptation first debuted in 2016, it's become a fixture in just about every space where Western Otaku gathers, from online forums to massive conventions. And with Season 4 in full swing, it's showing little sign of slowing down. You almost can't get away from it, particularly in the context of the award shows, where winners are determined by community votes. And while the sheer undying you can yeah, this franchise can be a bit frustrating if you're an anime hipster like me who wishes that people would watch more cool, obscure stuff, it's also, all things considered, oh, like pretty impressive sure. and not entirely undeserved. A lot of people really love this series, myself included, obviously. I've made more videos about it than Sword Art Online. But all of those have been about examining <laughs> specific aspects of the series under a microscope. Today, I'd like to take a look at the bigger picture. Because I think there are a lot of reasons, good ones, that this show and the manga it's based on have experienced the insane success that they have. My Hero Academia is undeniably a little overhyped, but it also undeniably I mean, yeah. deserves at least I mean, some crush. You know, I'd argue a lot. Personally, I think My Hero like... Academia is a great and I'm here to tell you like, yeah, sure. about it. Uh, if, Set in anything, a future world with technology enough, not far beyond our own, where the majority like, of people are born with bizarre superpowers uh, and mutations like, called quirks, My Hero awesome. Academia focuses, as the title suggests, yeah, 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 on the lives of students that's, that's, training to fend off superpowered true, crime as professional so. costume vigilantes. More specifically, it focuses oh, yeah. on Deku, a timid, weak boy so with that 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 powers who nonetheless yearns to the fiber of his being to save people with a smile, the way his idol oh, All Might does. Mm. All Might, the Nothing symbol of peace, is your classic spandex-clad crusader of justice. Super strong, super fast, and gifted with superhuman endurance, he's revered throughout the world as its greatest hero, like some sort of man who's super. But he has a secret. <laughs> the battle with a powerful villain some years prior yeah. left him a shell yeah, of his not, himself, really only able really to work as a hero for a short ran. time. Day. In his dark hours, he searches desperately for like he's actually to really to to carry the torch. Honestly, and when he sees he powerless yeah, Deku charge in to save his asshole like, classmate Bakugo from a villain he has no chance of beating, he knows he's found one. Lucky for both of them, All Might's One for All isn't like other quirks. Beyond simply yeah, granting right. super strength, it allows a person to store power within their body and ultimately pass it, along with the quirk, on to someone else. Several generations of these transfers gave birth to All Might's unbeatable strength, and now Deku has been chosen to inherit all of that power and the responsibility hey, hey, that comes yeah, with it, I, I to take ownership hey. of that legacy Obviously, and become the new obviously. symbol of peace. Say it's everything I, he's ever dreamed of, but it won't come easy. Just say, acquiring the power demands a year of exhaustive I, training, I, and after that, he'll have to compete with some of the brightest teen quirk prodigies in the world as they train in combat, search and rescue, and hero PR at the prestigious uh -huh. UA Academy, uh -huh. all while fending off attacks from sinister villains who seek to destroy All Might and everything he represents. Unlike yeah, the yeah, yeah. Promised Neverland, Hiraka doesn't really do all that much to innovate within the shonen anime. Yeah, I mean, it's not, and unlike it's One not, Punch Man, it's not, not all that interested in critiquing the concept of superheroes either. But then, it doesn't really need to. Superheroes are fun. Shonen battle anime is fun. So it stands to reason that a well-made shonen battle so anime about well, superheroes will really also be fun. And My Hero Academia is nothing. It doesn't well. 
Minor to the classic Wildlands. Chocolate combo down to a science. If you're looking for big emotional fight scenes where young spiky here battle boys put all their feelings into their battle boys, honor, I love the way he's great. That's awesome. Nakamas, this show has you more than covered. Nakama power. Girls are One piece. Good. And there are a few places where you'll see such fights. So God, one piece that was from other than My Hero Academia is I believe, a sucker just smorgasbord. I believe some of the absolute it's best never coming out again, dude. To ever come out of the studio that gave us FMA. Twice. I can yeah, how these characters twice, really yeah, right? But so is how twice, they draw. Dude. Yeah. My Hero Academia's greatest strengths as a manga is its art style. I say this as someone who spent literally hours staring at it line by individual lines and thumbnails. It goes beyond simply emulating American comics in an anime style. Kohei Horikoshi builds his character that are big, expressive, <laughs> and renders them with the ink-splattered line art that gets messier and more urgent with the action versus wow. intensity. Blend that with angled layouts and heavy use of exaggerated perspective, and you get these beautiful panels where the character what just seems to pop off the page. It's fucking fucking remarkable man, man. how faithfully Bo and Bo and Bo actually did it. Style and the man man did it. Without letting the man man actually did it. So often with anime adaptations, it's the man the man. You get a faithful reproduction of the manga that moves like a slideshow, or a relatively smooth show that looks kind of like it. I guess. I mean, maybe it also looks kind of like a lot of other shows, especially SAO. But the designs are the same, kind of. Bones tries hard not to make those compromises, though. From Oran Hosting to awesome. FMA Brotherhood. Oh, wait, this is Oran Hosting too. What the fuck? Basically, this is Oran Hosting. What the fuck? The fuck? Doing your bones. Christ, the mighty character of the original works art. And that's especially important for this Fuck. series, because Hiroaka throws a lot of different designs from all over the oh, cartoon. God, stop, 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 Boy, just ain't look right. The anime nails a really tough character. I, I, I really right hope out of the gate. I think a lot of it will be shot out slash, especially the fights. Like but it's not ten, just the fights that make those fights so good. Like As I hopefully like demonstrated through my anime like Pink Dive, four of them now, one of which I'm covering decades ago, was just released from copyright here. Please go give that a watch. I got shot. This series has a real knack for setting up fights that have high personal stakes for everyone involved, where every combatant has both a goal to accomplish and something uh, to prove. Great, dude. This makes the villains feel driven to danger, oh, man. simultaneously hey, making it all the more cathartic for hey, the underdog hey, heroes coming on top. Hey, a strong man. direction and great Come on. manga, oh, the man. series excels at no, the thrilling feeling of push and pull on the side of the battle, gradually building towards triumphant crescendo where the animation, music, art, and acting maybe one, maybe it's some place to go to see the stratosphere. It's powerful oh, stuff. Hiroaka also like, features like a this. lot of great creative fight choreography, though its protagonist doesn't always do the best job of showing that off. Because Deku's whole thing is breaking through his psychological and physical limitations to win the day by the skin kind of like his Superman. fights, especially the early ones, are often determined by simple bursts of raw and Power, which isn't all that interesting. Before he starts zipping around like Gran Torino with full towel and using his shoot style kicks, his style of fighting is very conventional, straightforward, as is All Might's. And while both of them do strategize in combat and make use of fancy footwork, neither of them really taps into what I think is the feel of crazy shonen anime fights. I see the time strategy. Specific power sets uh, one another, and bad. trying to figure out how one might triumph over the other. That dynamic is what makes a stand battle for JoJo, the jutsu trickery of Naruto, and the alchemic reactions of oh, anime so fascinating to watch and so fun to speculate about. And while I personally disagree, I can see why the relative lack of them led some shonen fans to label Hiroaka's fights as boring. Unfortunately, um, there are plenty of I other don't the academy to pick up the slack, and the series is still fucking awesome. For an essentially infinite range of wacky pretty much, honestly, you're not wrong. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty fucking accurate, honestly. Fingers together to 
sending and receiving sound waves through biological earphone jacks, to having hair made weird of super sticky grape balls, to shredding shit, nitroglycerin. There's a lot of powers I've never seen weird shit, here. Weird. And whenever the characters who have those powers get their time in the spotlight, the show has a lot of fun putting them to grief. And just Even legs. the more conventional superpowers usually come with an interesting twist, like how Ida's super speed is limited by the heat capacity of the exhaust pipe in the right story. Kaminari's lightning has the side effect of frying his brain at higher voltages. Those limitations force mm -hmm, yeah, the awesome. the limitations are pretty great, awesome. and prevent really the series really from rehashing ideas you're not, you're right. in Western comics. Actually, pretty yeah, pretty as a result, good. the series yeah. is at its best, at least action wise, during big events. The, the mad lad. Mad Pen Deku dude. I will always call him Mad Pen Deku. Zuku is Mad Pen Deku. It gets even better when allies my heart is and conversely, when heroes are forced to work with others whose powers don't complement their own, that can put some interesting hurdles in their way. Of course, most of the heroes in My Hero Academia are strange enough, which means that they are only just beginning to learn how to use their powers. And that conceit allows the series to handle power scaling in a different manner from many of the anime. Instead of powering up by learning new abilities or changing forms, Deku and his friends can the their efficacy in battle by honing the abilities they already have, and they got fucking them with tools got and push, finding push, new push, applications push, for push, them. Push, Deku push, achieves push, a push, 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 down, up, not so, by understanding a tense emotional struggle or unlocking some hidden potential he never knew about, but just, rather just by just changing how he thinks about one Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's actually more. That's actually more. In channel for the last body, rather than a force of the unleashes from the other part of it. Conversely, Bakugo, already an innovator in how he uses the explosions to fly, unlocks a new super move simply by reducing the area of his blast to increase the force behind it. This makes it feel particularly rewarding to see these characters. Oh, thank God. Yeah, it's actually. Yeah, it's actually. That's actually, yeah. Yeah, it also uh, further encourages nerdy theory tracks true. about how each character's powers might evolve or be mm. trained to apply in the future. That's a good point. And like, I always, like, I always, I don't think I don't think I got that much. The powers of how they evolve. When you're the powers of all of these things, you know, it's like something, yeah. Now, without going into the like rulers, the manga has recently awesome introduced awesome some awesome fuck some fuck yeah. more conventional also. vectors for character progression that have the potential also. to undermine this dynamic somewhat. But those vectors do still follow the general also, logic of how quirks work, and so long as Hiroaka makes, makes those changes rare and hard to okay. earn, and well, you got them shot, directly yeah. to major changes in the characters themselves, I'll be happy to keep them status quo. I did really enjoy that last big arc, but I do think that uh -huh. change is worth noting and to warn you guys about, because yes. at the end of the day, this is the, the kind of show yes. that lives on top of the the shit, dude. action. Which is not to say that Hiroaka is That's dumb, or that I he does not will get fucking hyped. I love my hair is so much, dude. That's just the kind of show it is. But that said, My Hero Academia does actually have more going on under the hood. I mean, it does, it does have a lot of depth, actually. I also think that's true. Amid all of the big, cool superhero well, fights, the series has the no distinction between a distinctly American brand of liberal individualism and the collectivist ideal that forms the core of Japanese culture. This tension is embodied in its core concepts. Hiroaka, the American-born individualist icon, the superhero, is put to work for the good of society through a very Japanese system of corporate ah, and that's 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 Someone who serves Just as a something in between. Of course, this isn't the only big show in anime to run with such a concept. Uh, one, 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 while it does acknowledge that individual heroes like Endeavor can potentially be bad people, for example, 
In 253 chapters and counting, it hasn't really touched on the possibility that such bad people might co-opt the power granted to them by the hero licensing system for their mm. own ends. Uh, I'm not sure if that's so much, within like, Japan's so hero system. Right, well, bureaucratic tyrants and self-interested faction leaders like One Punch Man's Sweet Mask and Kabuki don't really seem to exist. The system is represented as being mostly functional and resistant to high-level corruption, which can't really be said for any real-world policing system, so in that respect, I would say the series comes off as a bit of a uh, I don't really care about that. I don't care if I use it's, it's an ideal. To its credit, it it's the ideal of such systems can create problems even when they're functioning as intended. The perverse incentives it's, it's, that drive it's like my heroes say, heroes to the main thing is not the, fame and the, the, the ideal. This makes many young idealists feel disillusioned, some, like Stain, violently so. In the Vigilante spin-off manga, we oh, also see so how it can lower-income yeah. areas underprotected, allowing Yo. villains and local crooks alike to act with impunity, and leaving local volunteers like the Crawler to pick up the slack. What's more, the restrictive uh, nature of hero society plays a major role in nice. making villains out of outcasts and weirdos, yeah, pretty much, like yeah. Spinner, Magni, and Toga, and the worship of heroes as these exceptional individuals who make the world better so you don't have to, is shown to make common people more complacent and less mm, willing to... That's actually a very true. I actually can see that, honestly. Which creates sure a lot of yeah. little cracks mm, in society for which I run to people right. like Tomer and yep. Rocky can easily fall. Yes. A consistent theme among the series' rogues gallery is that society has failed most of them in one major way. Yeah, I mean, and by that is very true, honestly. That lens, My Hero Academia manages to make the actions of its antagonists comprehensible he, he does very without true. necessarily excusing them. Shigaraki wants to use his incredible power to break the world that broke him. Yep. Stain wants to use his to rebuild that world according to his ideals. Neither is in the right. I keep my head to the space way. Where they so I have to be talking to you. The social order has failed many of the series protagonists too. Hero society doesn't offer a lot of opportunities to quirkless kids like Deku. Ochiko's family has to endure economic hardship just to give their daughter a chance at success. Shoto's family suffered through years of abuse thanks to his father's single-minded pursuit of the number one spot. Uh -huh. Bakugo's yes, family and anger are dude. both the product of a society that has told that, him yeah, over and over that yeah, right? power makes it's him just better like than up, actually. Mineta is just allowed to be outside, unsupervised. Jesus what Christ. What's up with that? Right? Well, let's not forget the ultimate That's a damn good point, dude. Yep. Himself, Fuck with the replacing with Shinzo, bitch. Want to be Superman to replace him with Shinzo. By the world's existential need to perceive him as oh, yeah, something, I know to see him as something he was he is, up. which has also left the world teetering on the brink of collapse, clinging to a single fraying lifeline, because nobody can really be All Might, not even All Might, but he tries anyway, right up until yeah, right he kills him. Uh -huh. At least he needs to too. And that's the difference between them and the villains. Instead of lashing out or tearing things down because shit sucks for them, they do what they can with the advantages their unfair world has given them to make shit suck a bit less for everyone else. If enough people operated on that principle, as the next generation of heroes is clearly being raised to do, maybe their world wouldn't need to cling to a monolithic and fragile symbol like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I wonder how that's going to go. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Plenty of philosophical ground left to be explored <laughs> in both the anime and the movie. Let's see what he's up talking about. And the point of this video is not to dive deep and fully yeah, into the yeah, yeah, he's gonna spoil shit. But rather to highlight all of the strength. And I think the fact that it's exploring the impact of social media and asking fundamental questions about the foundations of society framed through a medium and a genre that general audiences and kids seem to like and understand is a major point in its favor. I like it when stories, especially cool, fun, accessible stories, push their audiences to think more about important things. Of course, it is equally important for these stories to be cool and fun and not get bogged down in pontificating about it. A good anime gives people good reason to get invested in its underlying ideas. One of the best ways to go about that is by getting us invested in the characters who are affected by them. The character is a pretty good one to start with. His light, soft-spoken nature makes him a likable underdog. His nerdy hobby of researching and analyzing superpowers gives him at least one thing in common with your average shonen anime fan, 
and the emotional journey. <laughs> that's oh, that's so sorry, actually, sorry. Oh. But he's far from the only great member of this I love cast. You. My Hero Academia doesn't have the deepest cast of characters in the world, I mean, but it does yeah, have the biggest it does very. The concept of quirks it allows doesn't. for an absurdly wide range of creative, wacky character designs, ranging it's, from animal people in both it's okay. and from uh, okay. uh, okay. varieties okay. of okay. comic book awesome. panels. There are 40 main, unique, distinctive characters just between the two first-year classes in UA and another 20 among the faculty and other students we've met so far. All of the hero agencies and the actually managed to do so far have also brought with them a handful of their own memorable characters. And let's not forget about the kids' parents. While most of these characters aren't explored beyond a surface level, they do all, at the very least, have clever defining characters. Every recurring character has a clearly defined personality, and more than half of Class 1A has undergone some kind of substantial character development, as have several characters outside of their class. Oh, this detailed is very, character very definition awesome. goes far beyond just writing. So you say run back right here, not does just as much to convey what these heroes oh god, the oh my are god. all about. Oh my god. Body as long as the series has gotten goodness. at this point, it certainly has had plenty of so room awesome. for character development. But still, it's far from easy to create this many characters with instantly recognizable designs, let alone write them without having their personalities blend together into an incoherent well, they don't really do that. To do all that while I simultaneously serving up a number of viable rivals and antagonistic foils for Deku and even a few of his classmates, well, that's pretty damn impressive. Large, it's, uh, diverse it's, casts it's, like this uh, are a disappointing feature of fuck, many dude. big shonen battle animes. You're great. Days. A lesson great, quickly man. learned from the successes of juggernauts like Naruto and One Piece. And I think it's a major part oh, of man. the genre's appeal. Kids, the target audience for these stories, also have a wide range of often vibrant personalities, so having a lot of different characters increases the odds that viewers and readers alike will Can find we, someone yeah. in the cast. Identify. Yeah, well, My is pretty good at making likable characters and giving them chances. Even if they to don't have be it that much taking sex. central roles in the story, or failing that by doing cool things to support the central players. That's not to say that the way the series handles its characters is entirely I mean, flawless. Oh well, no, of course has some not. of the strongest female character designs in the business, for instance. But not the strongest. I think the personalities that Horikoshi has attached to those depth. designs are really interesting and appealing. Not the best but when depth. it comes to actually like using those characters to do things in the story, I think it's fair to say that he's come up a bit short. Sure, the girls do get to beat up villains and do other stuff, but usually as part of the B plot of a story mm, that focuses I mean, on the that's honestly a fair critique. This also means I that the show hasn't had all that much time for disagree. interactions. I don't Deku completely and disagree. And love interest, Ochiko. A lot of their love story to this point has been defined by timid flirting and longing glances from afar, along with occasional collaborations on big school projects, which is how a lot of high school romances go. It's just... Not all that interesting to watch, and mm, it doesn't give me much that's reason to wish for them as a fair critique. And like that's a fair critique. Kind of looks cuter next to Froppy than oh, 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 he is supposed to be an action shot series, fired. Almost, so it is probably sensible shot to fired. at the periphery. Yeah, that's even in that light, the romance in Hiroaka comes it's off as a best. bit shallow. Yeah, that's a, shame that's a fair critique. Scenes, like Ochiko's tearful phone call with her mom and dad. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what is also he does demonstrates that he can uh, make us feel critique. things, powerful things for these characters. On that note, the bromance, on the other hand, is mm. very strong. Mm -mm. I can point uh, to yeah, Deku's relationship with any of his friends and mentors, but there's also Bakugo and Kirishima, the racer head and present mother. This series man. is kind of held this together by just strong this. bonds of male friendship and camaraderie, and those relationship dynamics oh, are God, really fun. Tamaki, Tamaki, there's also Tamaki, an atmosphere of supportive Tamaki, sisterhood among the girls in Class 1A, and their interactions Tamaki, with each other Tamaki. are plenty cute. I got a little at some point. Now, good heroes are nothing without good villains, and on that front, Hiroaka does yeah, not so so Its rogues gallery is varied, inventive, and menacing as all hell, particularly the core members of the League of Villains. Some but from wild, stain to overhaul and beyond, mm. every villain outside of that group leaves a distinct impression all their own. Oh, their fighting right. styles, their designs, their ideologies, yeah, and the impact they have on our heroes yeah, and the around them. 
it's also a great adaptation of a great shonen battle series. That's One of the best works. such adaptations of all time, I'd argue. And I think like its enduring popularity has just awesome. as much to do with the way that Bones and director Kenji Nagasaki chose uh, to adapt the manga as it does with the and quality it's, it's of that it's like, itself. Like, sure, See, prior like to like this last decade, lots, pretty much yeah. every major Shonen Jump manga got the same treatment when it came time to make it into an anime. Instead of being so made for a sucked. conventional 13 or 26 episode season order, Big properties like Naruto, Dragon Ball, Bleach, and One Piece were produced in perpetuity, essentially, with new episodes airing every week for years on end. Which is great if your goal is to fill weekly broadcast slots and keep a brand in the Not that great first. but less than great if your goal is to make the best anime Not that great you for, um, out of your source material on a consistent basis. Anime episodes typically cover more plot in a week than a short manga chapter does, so it wasn't uncommon for these shows to catch up to the comics they were based on, which led to drops in production quality as big fights had to be stretched out and animated on tight deadlines, and storylines had to be padded out with flashbacks and filler to rebuild the chapter buffer. Around the middle of the last decade, likely inspired by the earlier successes of Sword Art Online and Attack on Titan, a lot of bigger shonen manga adaptations are watching this trend. Tokyo Ghoul, Food Wars, Seven Deadly Sins, Haikyuu, Maji, Jojo, Bungo Stray Dogs, Noragami, Assassination Classroom, and, of course, My Hero Academia yeah, right? all arrived in That's shorter, more consumable do it. Like, packages with additional seasons or already in production the first one draft, ready to keep it's that it's hype it's train it's going. It's the advantages that this Christ. approach gave the show were obvious from the get-go. Every fight in Hiroaka, no matter how small, impresses with its animation and God, direction in some way. And what's more, it doesn't have to cheap out on dialogue scenes to make that happen. And the seasonal format gives it another huge advantage that I think makes for an even more advantage to your average shonen anime. Breaks for anime. This is a show with all the potential hype and action of Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, and Dragon Ball before it, but That's none of the like That's not strictly true. There is some anime original content in my hero academia, but the difference is that most of it's actually good oh. and it actively makes the show better. Better. Where the yeah, manga time time focuses time. squarely on what Deku and his rivals are up to, the anime often takes additional time to show what their classmates are doing at the same time, fleshing those characters out and making Which is them feel more like heroes. Which is pretty movie. fucking great. Honestly. Those underutilized female characters especially benefit from these additions. Froppy got half an episode to herself, and the girls get as many hero moments as the boys do in the movie. None of these are massive additions, and it's not like Hiroako would be bad without them, but by and large, I think they better. do improve the show. And I actually agree with you. only possible because the nature of this adaptation allows Studio Bones to look at entire chapters as complete stories and pace them accordingly. Exactly. Working from mostly finished manga arcs instead of ongoing stories published on a schedule that basically demands they be partly made up as they go along allows Yosuke Kuroda, the show's writer, to pick out a satisfying endpoint for each season in advance and then work backwards to fit the preceding manga chapters into equally satisfying, hopefully self-contained episodes, often focusing on specific characters and conflicts. With that done, he's then able to figure out which episodes need a bit more footage and where the season might benefit from a lighter, self-contained episodic break from ongoing storylines as well as what elements the stories that are being told that season are missing so that those elements can be injected into the filler content. All of this means that My Hero Academia's story feels tighter, better paced, and more focused than most of the big shonen anime that preceded it. If you're marathoning it the way that it ramps into major battles with a slice of pork oh. stuff at the start of each season, it can feel a bit slow, but That's once it gets for me, my dudes. it's hard to put down. And not only has it been able to keep that pace and quality up for over 70 episodes now on top of movies and OVAs, it's improved season over season. Okay, some people might argue that's not true for season 4, but I think that mostly comes down to the overhaul arc being the slowest part of the manga, especially before its 
climax. The anime is doing oh, the best to that material, as it always has, and because the break between seasons gives its staff time to see what is and isn't working and tweak things, its best has gotten better. The most noticeable jump in quality came between seasons 1 and 2, and in it's part, I think that's because the manga itself improved uh -huh. starting with the sports festival, I, but I at the same time, right. the anime increased its oh, rate so of chapters like, adapted to episode from 1.6 to 2, which made it feel a lot easier. And the show's visuals have just kept getting slicker and slicker as its animators uh -huh. have gotten more and more practiced at drawing these characters and its American comic-inspired aesthetics have been more refined. There are definitely benefits to weekly production. It tends to provide more stable employment for animators if it's managed well, which is really damn important, and it can be great for looser, less plot-driven anime like Pokemon Sun and Moon. But when it comes to making sense. serious yeah. manga adaptations, Hirohaka and Attack on Titan's approach just makes for a better product. And I think the series owes no small part of its good. success to that factor alone. Oh. Clearly, a lot of anime producers do, too. I mean, it's not perfect. Clover right. is the only big new shonen manga adaptation that hasn't followed their lead. There's no one I thing heard, it's not good. It's, success. I mean, I've heard it's like our present story is It right. has an inherently appealing premise that it executes on exceptionally uh -huh. well with Definitely does. Interesting underlying themes, a cool yeah, setting, and perfect. remarkable still really fucking And that can take an anime a long way. Perfect. But it also got very lucky. It came out at just the right time to capitalize on the superhero um, movie boom no, and the streaming anime I, boom. It right was now, picked up for adaptation right when the industry began taking a new, more consistent approach to long-form adaptations. This show helped to cement a business model I mean, that is going that to does like new a new anime lot. It does sound, sound like a lot of There work is work one last piece of the puzzle, though. My Hero Academia is a formulaic shounen anime, and since a lot of people really like the shounen anime formula, that's worked out like really nicely for you. But saying that yeah, doesn't mean really much if you can't you answer a related like question. Why do so many people like this formula? No, what is it about shonen anime and manga specifically that resonates well, like, with so many kids and adults oh, from seemingly all walks of life and all corners of the world? Like, like, I can go into a lot of detail on that point, and in a future video maybe I will. But in brief, here's my take. The world that today's kids are growing into just isn't the one that we or they were promised growing up. Technology and human capabilities are constantly evolving, but in many ways our societies and cultures are trying to keep up. Old heroic symbols designed to prop up the social order have become cracked and faded with time. Wow, dude, the students reading My Hero Academia now are set to inherit a life that's a lot dude, less wow. stable and a lot more dangerous than ours is today. The consequence that's of past pretty, generation failures is the system. Awesome. In the face of all that, it's hard not to feel like it's naive to right. envision a brighter future for humanity. Well, but kids things. are nothing if not naive. Are we sure? They're also clever, are resourceful, and defiant, sure? and capable of far more no, than give them not, credit for. In My Hero Academia, Maybe alongside Dr. Stone, The Promised nice. Neverland, Boruto, Black Clover, Maybe and all of the great shonen anime and manga that, that, that preceded them, uh, is sending its audience one simple option. message over and over again, in many forms. Children have the power to save the world. That's a notion I personally find a lot of comfort in. It's a big part of why, at 27, I'm still a sucker for these, call them what they are, serious, well-made children's cartoons. And uh -huh. I'm speculating here, but I don't think I'm the only one who needs to have that okay. shonen anime optimism from time to time. Dude, I Young or old, sometimes, sometimes we just need to feel a little hopeful. It's dark to so well. And through its emotionally charged yeah, fights and character arcs, Hiroaka excels at delivering that feeling. That's the first one. At the end of the day, so, My Hero Academia is its first. That's the first. Though it does contain uh -huh. a lot of work from many master craftspeople. It can be a bit shallow and predictable in places, and interesting as many of the ideas and characters that, present uh, are, so it doesn't bad. always I, do all that it could to explore them. It's not, it's not but it is bad. really it's not bad. at doing a lot of things that, for a variety of reasons, make a lot of people very happy. Its premise compels imaginations to run yeah, wild. Right. Its diverse roster of characters gives people heroes they can cheer for and relate to. Its epic climaxes have a way of injecting hype directly into the pleasure center of your brain. It's a good time. 
a consistent, oh. reliable good time. It pays the off the time investment it demands with some incredible You're time. Supposed to say you know, like, Whoopsie. yeah, maybe it doesn't deserve quite as many awards as it's gotten, but I, I think mean, it does it deserve to be it, celebrated it for that. Actually I'm doesn't. Jeff Du, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement. Dude, like, look at this, I'm like, like I'm sitting here, I'm just like, why do you know the assholes up here like I'm not finding anything? Because they're actually really like, I'm like, this is emotional when you pick up the accent up there to me because it's just like a quality, it's like, it like, has a lot of like, like, quality to it, but, but, I'm just saying, but because, you know, some people look down, some people look like, like in academia, but, it's really, it's honestly pretty fucking great. Greatest in the world, eh, that's all I I think. But, it's honestly, in my opinion, yeah, and my reasons are honestly pretty fucking awesome. At the end of the video, I would just like all my current subscribers on YouTube, all my current patrons on Patreon. And if you enjoyed the video, you can like a comment. If you, if you like, and if you turn the channel, please subscribe. And you can find the links to my current Patreon video I'm watching, as well as the redirect to the match itself down below in the description. If you want to find on Patreon, please do. And I'm going to keep to do it from the content. And, and finally, as my favorite, favorite area of your community, Creative Digital Talkings, it's a sign aura. Bye bye.